So as Catherine said about two years ago now, we were in a Harvard engineering class. I'm an electrical engineer by training. And we were kind of dropped into western Massachusetts with the Massachusetts State Police. Now this is a very dangerous area of the country, uh, a lot of gang violence. And we had to adapt. We had to work with police officers day and night, get to know them. You guys can probably know they're a little bit rough and tough sometimes. And we had to get used to that. And we loved it. And what we saw at the end of the day, though, is that America and the world as a whole has a pretty large problem. And mainly that's violent crime. If you look just in the United States last year alone, there are over 1.2 million violent crimes committed. And these are just the ones that were reported. That includes everything from aggravated assault, rape, homicide, robbery, uh, and everything in between. And so when you think about that, it's really startling. And you look at who's actually committing it, who's behind those crimes, and in some cases it's gangs. And you're seeing that in the United States alone, there are about 33,000 active gangs. Just think about the proportion of that for a second. And the people that are in those gangs, it numbers almost a million and a half. If you take Los Angeles, for example, there are over 100,000 known gang members. The LAPD, in comparison, is around 10,000 officers. So just think about that ratio for a second. And we started seeing a problem in a lot of these cities where these gangs were responsible for 48% of the violence as a whole in America. But in some places like Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, it could be higher than 70%. And so something had to be done about it, right? There needs to be a better way to fight gang crime in America and really make our cities safer. And where that begins is with our police departments. Now, how many of you here have ever interacted with a police officer? And not while you're being arrested or pulled over? <laughs> Fewer, that's what I thought. Um, have you ever kind of thought about what they do for a job or thanked them for doing their job? It's a very, very, it takes a very special type of person to go out there every single day to risk their lives, to risk getting shot, killed, attacked, to protect people they don't know. It's an amazing service to be able to call 911 and have people come to your door within minutes to handle any situation for you. It's really something to think about. Already in the US this year, there have been 56 officers killed in the line of duty. In 2012, 59,000 officers were assaulted while at work. Just think about that for a second, the types of situations they deal with. But at the end of the day, one of the biggest problems is that they're under-equipped. They don't have the right tools. They need to do their job. Uh, you know, they have good things. They have vests. They have the appropriate weapons. But you look at the software, and you look at the stuff they're using to actually analyze their data, and it looks like this. And so this is actually like Windows 95 style, right? It literally looks like someone vomited a thousand buttons onto a screen. You're trying to process arrests. You're trying to process incidents, and this thing's moving at like a snail's pace. This was made like... I think like when I was two years old or something, and this is still being used by a lot of departments. So we started looking at all these old systems, and then we realized they don't even talk to each other. A lot of the places in the country, you can move from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and you'll be on a different system. So if I'm a police officer and I'm interacting with someone who's interacted with you know, the town over's you know, police department, I may not know his history. I could potentially be getting into a dangerous situation, getting into a traffic stop where this person could attack me or attack the community. And unfortunately, that happens more often than you'd think. So what can we actually do about this? How can we fix policing in terms of the data they collect, how they're processing this, and how they can use it to fight crime? Well, what it really begins with is solving that underlying problem of how are they going out there and how are they managing the information, but then creating one whole solution. And that solution is literally what we created, which is an end-to-end -end software platform that allows police departments to do everything from make an arrest process an incident, so pulling you over something like a DUI to arresting you for felony murder in the first degree, and then doing a lot of analysis on that data. So we pull everything out, we figure out what the dynamic information is, and we're able to look at how gangs are moving through communities, what their trends are, who's running them, stuff like that. And then you help them share it. You help them share it across jurisdictions so that you have police officers in the same you know, metropolitan area who have access to the same information. That's what they need. And so let's look at the first step in the process. The first step in the process is fixing an arrest report, fixing an incident report. And the way we did that was we went out into the field. We would suit up, we'd put on the bulletproof vests, we'd put on the raid jackets, and we'd go out there. We'd go on patrol, we'd go serve warrants with officers in Los Angeles, DC, Massachusetts, and we'd do this for weeks. We'd do this at nights. We'd do the shifts from 8 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. on Friday evenings just to see what it was like, to get into their mindset. They're very mission-driven in what they do, and you really need to understand that you need to understand what's going on for them out in the field if you're going to build great software. The next part is making sure that you can share that data. A lot of times the stuff you collect as a police officer, like you know, a criminal informant, a victim of a sexual assault, that needs to be kept confidential, but you also need to make certain pieces of that information available to other officers. 
So we built in really tightly controlled curated data sharing tools and tied the system. And then the thing that's really powerful, though, is taking a look at how everything fits together. So let's say I make a traffic stop as an officer and I pull someone over for reckless driving. I want to know who's in the car sitting next to that person. What's their relationship? You know, is this his drug dealer? Are they sleeping together? Are they friends? Are they family? When you have that type of information, you can start to create these networks. And that's what we've done. We're pulling incident data, arrest data, everything legally obtained from officers that they've already been collecting and leveraging it in new dynamic ways. So you can start to see things like, you know, who are the shot callers and gangs? Who are the people connecting them to their support groups? Where are their money launderers fitting into the situation? Who are the ones who are spreading the ideas? Who are the ones who are spreading the communication? And that's what we're looking at. And with that, we can actually dismantle these groups. You're never going to arrest yourself out of a gang problem. You're never going to arrest yourself out of a drug problem. But if you target certain individuals to make these groups manageable, to make them less of a threat, and to make them actually have much less of a severe impact on communities, you can arrest the right people. You can bring them out and make it manageable. So we help detectives and we help analysts shape these groups with certain arrests, turning someone into a criminal informant, and various actions that will allow them to actually make the community safer. So you're probably asking now, has this been used? Does it actually work? And it does. It's been used in Los Angeles County now for about a year by gang task forces out there to actually target certain factions on the streets and take them off. We're finding murders that were committed that we didn't know who the suspects were. We're finding co-conspirators, co-defendants. We're tying people to crimes that we had no idea even existed. And at the end of the day, you're taking the very violent people that need to go to jail, and we're finding those people, and we're putting them behind bars. But we're also realizing, too, that there are a lot of people who just come into gangs because it's the only option they have. And so we're working to find them all their alternatives as well. Now, this is great, and it works at great scale within Los Angeles because it's just the gang units, but imagine a city where every single officer is using this, where everyone from patrol to sex crimes to financial crimes to homicide <coughs> is all using one platform to gather, manage, and analyze the data. Imagine what type of safer city you can create. And that's what we're doing in DC, and that's what's going to launch this fall, where you will see one city on one platform to really transform how law enforcement is done. Thank you so much.